There is a popular saying, the kitchen is the heart of the home. Keeping it clean and organized will not only make cooking a more enjoyable experience, but also saves time and money while looking aesthetically pleasing. In this video, I'm going to take you through the process of how I reorganize my kitchen while keeping things accessible and clutter free. The general layout of the kitchen is divided into two main parts the kitchen island to the left, and cooking area to the right. Previously, the kitchen was in a bit of a sorry state. We are faced with the challenge of a deep and narrow pantry, while having to keep ingredients for four adults. Over time, we often lose track of what we have and ended up with a lot of waste. The whole process is divided into seven simple steps. Declutter, measure, shop, decant, label, store, and organize. The first step is decluttering. I got rid of things we haven't used in over a year and goods that went past the expiry date. Next, I did some quick measurements of our pantry and fridge to make sure our bins and containers will fit in well. I spent some time planning to make sure we don't overbuy but also making sure we have enough to organize everything we need. I also made a list of all the spices and ingredients we used to help in making labels later on. I then shop from various places and brands for various things such as containers, bins, jars, and other organizational products. Once everything arrives, the first thing to do is decant. I got a set of spice jars to get a clean uniform look for all the spices I often use. It also helps in saving money down the line as I can buy herbs and ingredients cheaper in loose bags. A set of oil bottles for easy access when cooking. Remember to use a funnel to speed up the process and prevent spilling. A set of condiment jars for things I often use such as cooking salt. And a bunch of squeeze bottles in various sizes for condiments, dressings, and sauce. Last, I took the time to refill empty containers that were in my pantry. Once everything is in place, I made the label in template which I bought through an Etsy store. It came in various sizes which makes it easy to fit different jars and bottles. I then printed the labels on my own with a laser printer and waterproof vinyl sticker paper which I got through Amazon. This labeling process took quite some time, but the end result is worth the effort. It helps me save both time and money by preventing duplicate as I can see everything clearly. After labeling, it's time to move on to fresh produce. I kept leafy vegetables in a reusable mesh produce bag to cut down on plastic and reduce visual clutter. Other vegetables such as carrots are kept whole in a reusable food bag. For frequently used items such as spring onion, I took the time to cut them in order to save time when cooking. Storing them in the bag will also keep it fresh for longer, typically about 2 weeks. For a longer period, I recommend storing them in the freezer instead. I also keep some chopped fruits in the freezer, mostly banana and occasionally some mangoes or pineapple. This will help preserve it and can last for up to 6 months. It is also great for use in smoothies and shakes. Berries are stored in a designated berry bin, while avocados are typically stored in a fruit bowl on the countertop. Once it is ripe, I move them to the fridge to extend its shelf life for another 3-5 to five days. Once everything is stored properly, it is now time to organize. Let's start with the pantry and drawers. To the left, we have a total of 5 drawers and 1 cabinet under the sink. On the right side cooking area, we have a tall and narrow pantry cabinet in the corner, 2 cabinets under the stove, and another cabinet above the stove. Let's start from the left kitchen island area. I kept cutleries and kitchen scale on the upper drawer. Next drawer is for dining and dessert plates. Then bowls and serving plates, and bottom drawer is for foils and wraps. The cabinet under the sink is where I kept cleaning goods and supplies. I grouped them with boxes and trays to keep it organized.
The last drawer to the corner under the microwave is used to store extra cooking gear that we only use occasionally. On the countertop, I place paper towel, rice cooker, kettle, soap dispenser, and a fruit bowl. Moving on to the other side, the pantry cabinet is extremely deep and narrow, so I have to be a bit more strategic in organizing to keep things visible. The bottom cabinet is mostly for extra ingredients, beans, and instant noodles. The top cabinet is divided into four sections. The bottom level is used to store snacks and canned foods. The section above is at eye level, which is ideal for cooking ingredients. Next section is divided into two, baking goods and tea and coffee. The uppermost section is really high and hard to reach, so I only keep things at the front, cereal and protein powder. On the stove area, the bottom cabinets are divided into two sections each. This is where I keep pans, baking trays, and sauces. The cabinets above the stove is used to store glassware, food containers, and blender. The area beside the stove is for basic cooking needs such as knife, oil, spices, and seasoning. The final part is the fridge. I keep it organized by using simple bins and dividers. While there are occasions when things can get a bit messy, having a system in place for every single item makes it really easy to maintain and keep the kitchen organized. Here is a quick look at how I use the kitchen on a simple working day.
doing daily maintenance such as wiping the countertop, washing dishes after every meal, and throwing the garbage out every other day is also important and will help reduce the stress of deep cleaning. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.